sorry about that. Welcome, everybody. I am M. Lori Torok, and I am here in Southern California at Aloya Healing Arts. This is a center for Reiki and sound healing. And um, my work um, has been really focused on forgiveness. Um, it may be my life's work, in fact. You know, when I was um, younger, I realized very soon, even though I was brought up in a religious context, I realized very quickly that I didn't really understand what forgiveness was, and yet I knew it was an important piece in my religion. And I know a lot of people have grown up with religious constructs, and we find ourselves sometimes having stepped out of those prescriptive man-made religions, finding our way out in the world. And unfortunately, we're in a time where um, personal freedom is sometimes um, a matter of saying sorry, not sorry. That's where we are in America, quite frankly. A lot of people, even those on a spiritual path, owning their own personal experience more than the collective responsibility. And so we find ourselves in a precarious situation, knowing that to become more loving, more compassionate, more light-filled human beings, there's something that has to change. The answer I am told from my angelic guides is through forgiveness. That is the path through the, through the pain, the unrest, the disease that we are experiencing in this world. The path truly is forgiveness. And so it was probably about 10 years ago when I started to become a student of the angels of forgiveness. I'll call them that. Therefore, I don't need to bring in specific names, but they are beautiful beings, divine messengers who have really helped me and have taught me quite a bit about forgiveness. It was in 2018. Many of you, if you're my students, may um, know and maybe have already um, come across the Forgiveness Project. And that exists on my website at aloyahealingarts.com. I'm sure there's a link um, available to you below. Um, but the Forgiveness Project is a five-week program where you receive guided meditations and some activations, some things that you can do to activate compassion and forgiveness in your life. And that word becomes important. In fact, I didn't even know until the Angels of Forgiveness showed me recently that the reason why they wanted me to call it activations instead of exercises or practices, which all sounds so much like drudgery, right? They wanted me to call them activations because it is in the action, in the doing, that you bring in a higher vibration. That is the alchemy of forgiveness. Forgiveness is actually an action. That activation in turn moves out into the world and becomes activism. And so I'm shown that spiritual activism is really an important piece of where we are going for our human evolution. And so I'm so glad that you are here, that you have been called to press play and either to join me live or to um, experience this at a later time. Because um, what we're doing here is releasing resentment. And that is a dominant piece of our energetic response in the world, resentment. And forgiveness is really um, to cease the holding of resentment against an offender. To cease the holding of resentment against an offender. See, people have heard us. That's happened. You have heard others. That has also happened. The thing is, if you are holding the resentment, you are still hurting. The resentment itself, I'm shown, does more harm than most of the actions that have been done out there. Yeah. We're not talking about justice and going through the court system and people paying the, the societal debt for doing things that are harmful. That is something different. Justice. Even, even divine retribution, if there is such a thing. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about human relationships and working one-on-one -on -one with people and releasing resentment, not holding anybody 
um, to your sense of hurt and harm. In fact, at one point many years ago, I was in meditation and I was asking about forgiveness for something that had happened to me when I was quite young. And then I was shown how to handle this and what to do with it. But then I was given this bit of information. I was told that no matter what anybody has done to me, what I have done to myself has been far worse. That was a great awakening for me. That was a huge realization that I was more comfortable seeing myself as a victim. I'll, I'll own that. Then understanding that what I've done with myself with those energies has been far worse. You see, we keep that going on. We keep sending that out into the world over and over again, recycling those energies. So let's let's talk about um, the reasons why people don't forgive. Why would you stay into that sense of resentment and anger and holding? In fact, boy, I, I have a lot of clients who come to me for various um, issues, whether it's in the physical, mental, emotional, and they come in seeking Reiki or sound healing because they'd like to break up that energy and get back into the flow of life, feeling that flow of light through their systems once again. But so many times underlying that is some resentment, anger, victimization, um, non-forgiveness. And it's that piece that we end up talking about sometimes. And um, even recently, I had somebody who came in and said, no, I want this healed, but no, I'm certainly not going to forgive this. I will never forgive that. And I think there are a lot of people who go through life with the, that is unforgivable. I will never forget that kind of peace. So let's talk about the reasons why people don't forgive. So these are some of the things that come up. If I forgive you, I'm accepting what you did. That's a big one. That's a big one. It looks like I'm going to bless what you did to me or to others, and I will not do that. Therefore, I hold you accountable and um, to blame. So there's a blame piece there. I'll go through these a little more quickly. I am too broken or hurt to move on. I want you to feel as badly as I do. If I demonstrate how broken or hurt I am, you will feel guilty and that will appear to give me strength. If I remain broken, someone else will fix me. If I choose not to forgive you, I will maintain the power and control in this relationship. If I do not forgive you, you will be punished by some outside force like the divine who will vindicate my pain. If I forgive you, I would be accepting what you did. Therefore, I must not forgive. I cannot forgive you because deep down, I feel I am better than you. I choose not to forgive because someone needs to be blamed for how my life is now. I cannot forgive because it is not my job to do so. That's up to God. I cannot forgive you because I cannot forgive myself. I don't know what it means to forgive. I am afraid. These and many more might resonate with you. These are reasons why people find it more comfortable to stay in non-forgiveness. And I'll be honest, for me, when I was growing up, I found it um, more comfortable because that was familiar to me. I didn't know what I was going to do or what energy was going to take the place if I let this go. If I grew up with this angst, this stress, this pain, I was familiar with it. And so in that way, it was somewhat comfortable. What was going to take its place? I'm so grateful that I kept asking the questions. What does it mean to forgive? How do I get past this? What do I do now? These are the questions I was asking my angels and so grateful to receive the guidance. And so the Forgiveness Project has grown into a book that will be coming out this year that gives you more um, uh, personalized activations and it's more of a workbook, a journal to help you uh, access your Angels of Forgiveness as well and receive direct guidance. It also holds in it the Forgiveness Project, that five week program. But I was guided, as uncomfortable as this may be, I was <laughs> guided to create this monthly global forgiveness circle. 
And that is because what we do individually is great. It is important. It does go out into the world. And if we start to recognize that our personal actions of forgiveness is a form of global activism, then things will shift much quickly, much more quickly and um, much more effectively. And so um, we're going to spend a little bit of a time, if you wish, to join me in a meditation. This meditation will be guided. We'll go into our heart center. And even if you've never meditated before, this will be very comfortable for you. Follow your inner guidance. If at all it feels uncomfortable, you can just step out and just hold space quietly. That would be beautiful as well. Meditation is similar to prayer, except we're not going to be sending up our petitions. We're not going to be asking for things or talking about what we want to see happen. You see, the first piece of working with angelic guidance, you find out that our perceptions are not quite accurate. We don't really get to have the full divine perspective of what's really going on here. We have a limited perspective here. And so I don't insist upon what has to happen and what it needs to look like. But I do insist that I am clear enough to hold space and light so that the highest and best good can come through. So go ahead and make yourselves comfortable. Find a place to sit back, relax. If it's easy for you to do so, go ahead and lie down. I'm going to raise the music here. Take a few deep breaths and feel the space. Feel the space of your physical body here and now, knowing that this is not all of you. This is one aspect of you. The physical you in the material world. There is space around you as well, your energy body, the etheric body, the memory body. This holds the energy of the thoughts you have had, the things that have happened to you, the memories, the vibrations. Beyond that is the mental body, the thoughts you have, how you process what has happened to you what you experience in this world. And beyond that is the emotional body, the part of you that goes out further than all other parts of you. This is far reaching the emotional body. It is why it is so important that we get very clear that our intention is of light, compassion, wholeness, healing, so we call these the four lower bodies. They are all you, but they are experiencing this life stream. They hold the energies of this life stream. And in the middle of these four lower bodies is your heart center. Perhaps place your hands over your heart. There is the physical heart, yes but there is an electromagnetic field surrounding the heart, similar to the four lower bodies. There is an energy field, a thought field, an emotional field. Your heart center opens the door to all that has ever happened to you and it holds all the love you have ever known in this lifetime and in every other lifetime. Allow that love to come forward. In fact, if it is comfortable for you, simply acknowledge nothing matters but the love I feel, the love I hold, the love I give. Nothing else matters but love. As you say that to yourself, nothing else matters but love. See what that does throughout the four lower bodies. 
You may feel it relaxing the physical, calming the mind, centering the emotions. Nothing else matters but love. I'll be quiet for a few moments while you repeat that mantra. Nothing matters but love. Love is all. As you allow that vibration of love to move through every cell of the physical body, see, feel, sense, and know it is bringing healing energy. It is love that heals. It is love that heals. The love I speak of is not a physical love It is a divine love. It is a high vibration, unconditional love. You do not need to complete any task, change in any way. This love is within you. Allow it to flow. You set that love in motion. It is an action. Healing yourself with love is active. Let it flow through you. That love begins to expand and flow outward, surrounding you out into your auric field of the four lower bodies, the electromagnetic field of your being. It moves outward and comes back to you. In this expression of love, giving is not a loss. Giving multiplies and it comes back to you to receive. So send your love outward. It is now filling your room, your space, your home. If there are any thoughts of limitation coming in or questioning how can that be, Simply move back into the heart and let the heart teach you what it is capable of. The unconditional love of your heart now moves out beyond your home, out into your neighborhood. You don't need to direct it and certainly be careful not to keep it from any areas or places. Allow it to flow. It is intelligent, it is divine. Allow it to flow outward to do its work. We are done with limiting what love can do. Now we will follow its lead, allow it to flow. It now fills your entire region, moving outward still.
moving out through your country, out into oceans, bodies of water, through all of nature, down into the earth, up into the sky, through the air, through the waters. It now moves out, crossing oceans, crossing continents. And you see love enveloping the entire planet. And there are others doing this work as well in their own way or even with us in this circle at other times in the future. This love will be met by others expressing love. You are not alone in this loving action and it is held in the angelic realm as well. Feel how love expands you. Raises your vibration. this beautiful sacred space, we're going to ask for guidance from your higher self, from your angelic guides. Is there anything, any place where I need to send forgiveness? It may be something within you It may be something in your perception of the world. If anything comes into your mind, whether it's a vision, a thought, a word, or an inner knowing, simply surround it with love. Hold nothing but love for anything that needs forgiveness. Love is healing. Love is alchemy. It will transform the lower vibrations into the higher vibrations. If there is a person that comes to mind, surround them with love. If judgment comes in, surround that judgment with love. If anything that disturbs your peace comes forward, simply surround it with love. And if there is any resistance to doing that, surround that resistance with love.
In this sacred space of unconditional love, in the middle of this flow of energy, we're going to take a deep breath, a breath that spirals up out of the top of the head to the great sun, the sun behind the sun. On the exhale, you will bring it down through your chakra column, your energy centers along the midline of the body. And we will go right down into the earth on the exhale. And then on the next inhale, we will come back up to the heart center once again. We'll go ahead and breathe together and inhale. Connect with the golden light of the great sun and on the exhale, Bring it down through the body, down into the earth, connecting with the gold veins that flow through the earth. Now bring that energy back up to the heart. This is you centered in the middle of the sea of love. This is a great grounding breath that activates your energy centers and centers you in the middle of your heart. Let's do that once again for practice. And inhale, spiraling up out the top of the head. Connect with that golden light and now exhale, bringing it down through the body. Right down through the earth star chakra down into the earth and then inhale back up to the heart <sighs> scan the four lower bodies the physical the energy body 
the mental body, the emotional body. Scan them in your consciousness now. Is there any place of discomfort, unrest? If there is, identify it. Hold it in your consciousness and send the light and love from your heart directly there. Now we're being asked to take a moment, placing the hands on the heart once again. You are being asked to forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for all the times you were not forgiving. You are in the process of evolution. You have learned to do things slightly differently. You are learning to love. You must forgive yourself. Release all guilt, all lower energies. Consciously choose to forgive. No longer hold resentment against the self. If you find that difficult, begin that great grounding breath again reaching up, exhaling down into the earth and coming back up. Allow that flow to help you in the release of inner resentment. And we'll take a moment to show gratitude for the self, for showing up to do this work, for showing up to activate compassion and forgiveness, and for sending love out to the planet. This is good for you. And we will also show gratitude for the beautiful angels of forgiveness and all the guidance that we received. As you take another deep breath, pull your consciousness back in fully to the physical body here and now. Leave no part of you floating out. I know life can be very difficult and it seems to be um, more pleasant (laughs) to be up and out. But you must come back. You must come back. We need you. We need you to be doing this work here on Earth. This is how we transform the world. I have no doubt. Yeah. So I'm used to teaching in person, and after that on Zoom, where people were very present, there is a way for you to respond on the side. 
I'd love to hear from you um, about anything that came through, anything that you would like to share uh, about the things we spoke about at the beginning or the meditation itself. Um, we'll take a moment to, to hear from you if there's anything you'd like to say, anything you'd like to share. Thank you, Linda, for your support there at the beginning. I appreciate it. <clears throat> Forgiveness is a is a real process. Um, it's not a one and done. One of the things that is out there, and I guess it's the thing that stuck with me the most as I was um, growing um, <laughs> into adulthood, was this thought: forgive and forget. I think that's really all I was ever taught about forgiveness. Forgive and forget, forgive and forget. Uh, just so you know, that that isn't even in any sacred text. That's not um, that's not really divine guidance. That was written in um, in a novel, and then sort of adopted as what we should do. And so, a lot of people don't want to do the work of forgiveness. They want to get to the forgetting. I don't want to feel it anymore. And so we want to forget it as if it never happened. We push it away and then we're shocked when it comes back because we thought we forgave. Well, we, we kind of put it behind a door, but we may not have really done the activation of forgiveness, the conscious holding of love and filling the experience with love. That is the forgiveness process. So I thank you all very much for joining this process. I trust you received whatever you were meant to, and this will stay online for your use at any time. I have been guided to do this on the first Saturday of every month for the full year. So there will be 12 episodes. It will not be the same thing each time. This one is considered an introduction to forgiveness. Then we'll get into some energetic pieces and talking about more specifics about how energy flows, and how your energy affects others in this flower of life. So I send you uh, much gratitude, thanks, and love. Blessings to you in the process. <laughs>